Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat anything comics. Old issues, new issues, history, anecdotes, we talk about it all. I'm Sasha and I hope you like puns because otherwise you are going to be very annoyed because today we're talking about deceased. You get it? It's DC zombie miniseries that began in 2019. If you're always down for a short weird mini event, hit that like button. So zombies, they are truly undead, creeping into all forms of media, waxing and waning in terms of popularity. And they've had some pretty successful highs in comics. They're a pretty safe bet. There has been a big prior comic event that many people think of when they think about zombies before they'll think about deceased. This one was from over at Marvel, an event called Marvel Zombies Zombies from back in 2005, written by none other than Robert Kirkman of the Walking Dead comic fame, and also the series fame. He added some extra zombie legitimacy to the whole thing. And also, yes, Walking Dead as a comic has been going on forever. It too is undead, although it is finally coming to a close now. It lasted a long time. The series would prove so successful and popular that it would spawn at the time of this recording 12 sequels slash spin-offs, so both. This includes another Marvel Zombies, slated for October of 2019, with the tagline, The Dead Will Walk Again, just in time for Halloween. The last part isn't in there, I just added it because, well, that's why. DC is also going to do its own horror-themed event around that time involving the dark multiverse. Now there's multiple multiverses, positiveverse and negativeverse. Why? Because then you can redo things but claim that they're new and get more sales. I'm in a cynical mood today. What do the zombies do to me? DC has been quieter on the zombie front, but that has clearly changed with Deceased. I'm not sure if it gets better or worse every time I say it. Also, this one is teen plus or 16 plus. You know the drill, get an adult or I will be the designated adult for this venture, or rather adventure. <laughs> Yeah, you probably want someone else now. So this is Deceased, written by Tom Taylor with pencils by Trevor Harrison and James Heron, and colors by Rain Barreto. It opens, of course, with melodramatic narration over Darkseid's eyes. My mother used to tell me there is no such thing as monsters. There was nothing hiding in the dark. Nothing was going to jump out of the shadows. I wish I could have told my child the same thing. But by the time I was grown, I'd seen too many monsters. Also, this first chapter is called Going Viral, which also has a double meaning, which you will get in a bit. Double puns, get excited. The League has just taken out Darkseid in a fight so epic, so cool, it would have burned out our retinas if we'd seen it. So we're coming in at the end. Also, some of the dialogue that the heroes have is a little stilted. Like for example, this Batman line here, where he says, you will not return to our world. Like no caps, nothing, just flat. And Wonder Woman saying, Say it, the lasso of truth compels you. The lasso of truth compels you. I wanna say it with a preacher voice, but I can't do one, so that's as close as we're getting. So Dark Side leaves, but not before being like, Fine, I have what I came for. Then Batman's bat smartphone pings. Cyborg is off world. So the Batman in this is pretty much like a Batman coming straight off the OMAC project. He is super paranoid, doesn't trust anyone around him because, well, Zatanna wiped his mind. That's what happened in that arc in Identity Crisis. And because of that, he just got more and more paranoid because he could remember that something had happened, but not exactly what, but he knew he'd been betrayed. So he had all of these contingencies in place for everything. They retconned this out with a new 52 and then still had it retconned out in Rebirth, but some of it seemed seems to be eeping its way back in. Like for example, some of the OMAC stuff was part of what happened with Heroes in Crisis. So it's kind of convoluted when it doesn't have to be. You retcon something out, live with it. The point is, Cyborg is off planet. Batman has a tracking system in his subroutines and defines Cyborg as a living weapon that they need to keep tabs on. And then everyone judges him for it. Clark in particular looks like a disappointed dad with his arms all crossed, but really he should know better than anybody that Bruce does this. Clark, you gave him kryptonite. The art of the Flash berating him is really cool though. Shout out to this art. And then they make jokes about it. Tone, what's that? Cyborg has been taken to Apocalypse so that Darkseid can use him to perfect the anti-life equation. Cliff notes, the anti-life equation is something that Darkseid is constantly seeking. He learned about the existence of a life equation and so figured there had to be an anti-life equation. With the anti-life equation, he could mathematically prove that love, hope, and freedom are meaningless, hence creating the ultimate sheeple. However, his attempts to merge what he has with Cyborg's metrics goes awry and creates, you guessed it, techno-organic zombies. But sadly, that's just how it spreads. They're not actually a horde of cyborg zombies, I wish. Slowly transformed into a cyborg and a zombie. That's too much. We couldn't handle that much cool. A corrupted dark side destroys Apocalypse, leading to a clever play on Darkseid's tagline, with the sod going, Darkseid is, and the narrator going, 
Darkseid was. Oh snap, Cyborg is flung back to Earth, but his tongue's been cut out so he can't speak. But wait for it, the virus starts to spread through phones and the internet and Twitter because your screens are turning you into zombies. Do you get it? It's going viral. If you watch too many screens, you turn into a zombie, just like your mom always said. The worst part of this is I can't tell if this is supposed to be the takeaway or if it can just be inferred. Cause if so, is the moral put your phone down and go outside and read a comic book? Also comics are heavily promoted on social media and online. It's part of how they're spread around. It's part of the modern word of mouth. So this argument, if this is indeed the argument that's trying to be made, just seems like it comes from way back in 2002 when everybody's parents suddenly realized that the internet wasn't going anywhere and that it wasn't just a series of tubes. They say the user lives outside the net and doesn't read enough comic books. Okay, one more. I guess that Tom Taylor has read Stephen King's Cell. All right, um, I'm done, I'll see myself out. Superman hears the screams of the zombies and their victims and instantly worries about his family, Lois and John. In main continuity, him and Lois's relationship is messed up almost to a level of one more day, but we'll talk about that another time. John goes to get his phone, leading to my favorite panel, Superman bursting in, burning the phone with his heat vision and blowing up their TV, all while yelling, don't look at the screen. I like to think that he's this dramatic just whenever something happens with screens, like when John breaks his curfew. No texting past 10 p.m. In the Batcave, Batman is still looking at several screens, but it's fine because he's got a bat firewall. But what's not fine is he realizes that it's being spread through the internet and the house connection is on. So he activates the housewide EMP because of course he has one. Then he goes upstairs to check just who is okay and who is zombie. To his and my utter horror, it turns out that Nightwing and Tim have been turned into zombies. Alfred is fine because he knows that you don't look at screens. The narration waxes dramatically over the fight as Batman struggles to subdue his children. With an epic last panel mildly undone by the unrelated narration that will definitely play better once all the issues are released. There's a monster inside all of us. Even though that's not really true, techno-organic zombieism is very different from everybody having like a secret dark side, unless that's what the virus activated, everyone's inner zombie because they look at screens. Screens make you a cannibal. Screens are the true evil. This comic is just okay in my opinion, but lots of people really, really love it. And it definitely gains some brownie points if you're really into zombies, because then you get to see some of your favorite characters dealing with one of your favorite tropes. But some of the dialogue is awkward and meant to advance the plot, character be damned, while other moments are pitch perfect. And the art really does capture the horror of what is happening. Speaking of art, we have to get to a big part of what is driving sales for these comics, and that is variant covers. This one, issue one, has 19 variant covers, and that's not even counting the ones that are just line art or no text, and then some with text or one item remove or one item in. There's a lot. Now variant cover is essentially just another cover that you can get the comic with, but in the modern era it tends to be something more conceptual or out there than the regular cover, hence increasing the need to buy it. So essentially it is officially sanctioned fan art. As we all know, the line between fan works and official works is very thin, and essentially involves just getting hired, and hence having that veil of officialness and of course legal legitimacy. But oft times the artists will just use the opportunity to draw their favorite characters in their own scenario. So. Fan art. fan art is not a dirty word and deserves so much more respect, as does all transformative fandom to be honest, especially at the time of this recording. It is not a replacement for canon, but nor does it have to take away from. In fact, many times it elevates it and shows a true dedication and fan love. So what about these variants? Well, some of them are redrawn covers or redrawn famous moments, including the one I used for the thumbnail of a redone death of Superman. There's a couple of Harleys since she is now essentially DC's Deadpool so she's everywhere, and this really morbid horror variant that has nothing to do with zombies at all, and is actually it redrawn with Joker as Pennywise luring Jason to his death? I'm really into it, but why is it here? Also, these variant covers and just the covers of this miniseries in general are what people talk about most rather than the comic itself. Deceased number six cover reveals Catwoman leashed by Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy. I don't know why that didn't just say and. Deceased number five cover pits a bloodied Wonder Woman against Superman. So deceased, DC zombies, are you here for it? Do you need all of these variant covers? What is your favorite supernatural outing from the big two, Marvel and DC? Share all of your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, please do all of the YouTube things. Like, share, 
comment, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so that you never miss a vid. I'm Sasha and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.